Good morning, everybody. We're just going to give it a few more minutes for people to get uh, come on in. Hello, Bobby. Hello, how are you? I'm good. What about you? How was the holiday weekend? Uh, well, it's it was um, wonderful. Um, it just the weather was perfect. Finally, we've had such cold and rainy spring. Um, it was nice to have a weekend that was just nice to get out and garden and do that kind of and you know, walk the dog and stuff. <laughs> That's great. It's like finally getting out of your winter, um, you know, cocoon. <laughs> okay, so can everybody see my screen? Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay, so um, I'll give it till five after and then I'll just start the meeting. Actually. Okay, we have a, like a big crowd, which is great today. I appreciate everybody coming. You have no idea. Um, I got things a bit organized today. Um, so we're going to get started in just one minute. I'm going to start at a little after nine. So if you're seeing my screen, you're seeing the antitrust policy, and they all are welcome in the Hyperledger community and a link to the code of conduct for Hyperledger. Um, please take a moment to review uh, the information on your screen. And just a reminder, this call is recorded. Um, so today for the agenda, um, I don't want to uh, uh, jump too far ahead. I do want a chance to talk to everybody on the call. So we're going to probably do that um, in a minute. Um, we do have Min, who is one of the um, Hyperledger uh, community members and staff in charge of the mentorship program. Um, I thought running one section of one one of the um, individual programs was overwhelming. I cannot imagine what Min is going through trying to manage all of these programs. Um, but she's going to talk a little bit about that. And um, we are going to chat about our role to assist the other mentees um, in the project. So um, again, um, I'm going to turn it over to Min so that she can um, give us her information and get on her way. Hi, Min. Hey, Bobby. Hey, everybody. Thank you very much for the opportunity to, uh, yeah, just to uh, say hello and uh, see how um, this group and uh, the, uh, the Hyperledger Mentorship Program and everybody involved in that program can collaborate together. Um, yeah, uh, not necessarily a presentation. I don't have any slides prepared, more sort of like to say hi and uh, yeah, just to see if there's any feedback from this group and how we can collaborate. Um, just as a little bit of background, um, Hyperledger Mentorship Program, this year we have 30 projects. We will have 30 mentees and uh, probably 50, 60 mentors uh, in the program. Uh, this uh, actually we just finished reviewing um, all the mentee applications who applied formally to our these projects in our program. And uh, this week we are uh, sending out offer letters to the accepted mentees. Um, also this week, we will also be opening up uh, applications on LFX mentorship platform for 15 projects that are, uh, they're not in the mentorship program that we put them in the uh, collaborative learning program. Uh, so mentees will also have uh, the opportunity to apply to these projects. Um, the main difference is the mentorship program is a little bit more formal on uh, the mentees who get accepted into the mentorship program, they will receive a stipend for kind of the work and outcome that they deliver. Um, for the collaborative learning program, they all also have, you know, uh, a project, a defined project and or already mentors who, who raise their hand to be willing to mentor. Um, the, the structure will be a little bit 
uh, less formal than the mentorship program and the mentees, um, they will not uh, receive a stipend. Um, so that's the main difference between these two programs. Uh, so this week we're doing offer letters to the accepted mentees for the mentorship program. And uh, next week we will be onboarding the mentees and any mentors who are, uh, who are available or interested in participating in that session, they're welcome to join as well. Um, in the last few years, how I've done the, it's a one hour session where I kind of go through uh, kind of the purpose of our mentorship program, kind of review who is who, you know, uh, introduce the staff, uh, who are the mentors for the mentees, um, just to show kind of the cohort so that everybody get to know each other a little bit better. Um, and then we just kind of give a few tips and best practices, uh, expectations um, uh, from both for mentors and mentees. And then uh, we go through kind of the logistics uh, for the program from a, you know, uh, what's what are the dates, evaluation schedule, and uh, stipend process? Um, so more from a logistics perspective, and also just some tips on, you know, if you're a mentor, mentee in the Happy Ledger community, how you can uh, showcase um, your contributions. Uh, so some you know marketing um, related things that you can do, right, to raise your profile and visibility. So that's kind of what I've done in the past, but I'm really open to suggestions and feedback. Um, and also just, you know, obviously I do that one onboarding session, but I understand, you know, learning is a continuous process. Um, you know, should there be, you know, extra sessions or other paths that we kind of optimize that, you know, experience for our mentees uh, specifically and, and mentors as well. Um, so that's why I'm here to kind of, you know, listen and hear what this group, um, how we can collaborate. Well, thank you, Min. I have um, quick two comments. The first thing okay. is that I've offered, there's 17 people on the call and um, mm -hmm. I think they're all staying for the entire summer for me to mentor this whole project kind of by committee and, and you'll see in a minute what we're talking about. Um, uh, so I'm hoping that, you know, maybe we can fit them into that other program you were talking about, maybe make a, mm -hmm. a documentation section for that too, so that it's a little bit more formal than me just saying, yay, I'll mentor you guys too. Um, that would be great for everybody on the call, I think. Um, so the collaborative can... learning program? Yeah, put a piece in there for all the because all like there's 17 people on the call and they're, they're um, you know, that would be great if we could run it through something formal rather than just this documentation task force kind of theory. Yep. So I just put the link there. Uh, so awesome. you uh, um, chat. So that's our collaborative learning program. It's kind of an ex, uh, we're doing this for the first time piloting this this year. It's really just to expand. Um, the number of new contributors receiving mentor um, and guidance to kind of, you know, enter the hyperledger community and become a more pro uh, productive, uh, active contributor. And the projects already defined, they kind of went through the same project proposal process. So you can see if you go on the left hand side, um, you'll see uh, the seven, I think we have 14, 15, if I'm correct. Um, and uh, we connected with the mentors they are willing to mentor. So if you, uh, yeah, so if you click on the left, yep. So those are collaborative learning projects program, um, the projects in the program. So these projects, we will be listing them on LFX. So, uh, you know, then you can apply there as well. Um, so uh, this is great. And I wanna just uh, throw out one more offer. Um, we meet every Monday at this time, and if anyone from any of the mentorship pro programs have any questions, we also work on, which I'm going to show you real quick in a second, um, mm -hmm. other things that will help them. So um, you can kind of almost label the nine o'clock uh, documentation call open hours, if you want, mm -hmm. for people with questions um, mm -hmm. through the, the summer, if they need help. Um, just to, to put that out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'd love that's we are, and this is why I'll explain um, in a second 
Um, so we're responsible for, as this task force slash mentorship program, um, mm -hmm. these four uh, kind of buckets and all four of them need user guides, which is another um, mm -hmm. thing we're wor working on through the summer. But the GitHub repository more has to do with um, a lot of the mentorship programs, um, projects, mm -hmm. because when we're going through the um, mentorship um, applications, these all had documentation pieces. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a lot of volunteers who are on the call who want to help out with that. Um, mm -hmm. And I was kind of thinking it was a little overwhelming for me to try to figure out how to assign by committee people to handle this. And I had this epiphany over the weekend. Um, I think that it might, and I want to throw it out there to the, get the consensus of the group in a bit, um, but I think everyone should be assigned a project or a tool um, and try to figure out the documentation needs through the through what's existing and coming in through labs and mentorships for that project. So obviously, like Fabric might have um, Fabric has its own documentation um, subgroup. So that would be like one person communicating with them and bringing the information back to our documentation group. Somebody would be assigned to Firefly. They would go to the Firefly meetings and go through Min's list of, of mentorships and see if any of them use Firefly and will need documentation and reach mm -hmm. out to them. So I'm going to probably, hopefully, if the group agrees, assign someone to each project and tool that would be kind of their documentation specialist. Mm -hmm. um, it, and we'd like to introduce that at your presentation. Say, you know, we are here to help you with your documentation needs. We're gonna give you suggestions on templates how to make your GitHubs and to read the docs that Hyperledger accepts, you know, what needs to be in your, your lab GitHub repository. We have that template for you too, that kind of information. So we want to just two minutes in your meeting, say um, somebody will be reaching out to your project um, and asking for your documentation needs. But if you have any questions of us, join the nine o'clock Monday call. What do you think? That's, yeah, that sounds uh, like a good idea. I'm happy to. Um, it, are you? Are you saying you you'll be willing to come to the uh, mentorship onboarding session just for like a five minute? Uh, offer oh, we'll put together a pre. Yeah, our group will. Uh, I'm sure there are people on this call who would love to make that presentation on behalf of the documentation task force. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe we could put together a, a quick five minute slideshow just suggesting what we're, you know, offering to do um, to support all documentation needs in the community. Yeah, that sounds, uh, yeah, I'll reach out to you and we can coordinate uh, the time um, and the materials. Great. And I'll coordinate the, you know, the presentation on this end. Yep, sounds good. Okay. Um, and so just let us know when you think that is and I'll put it up on our, our page and we'll move from there. Sounds good. It'll be sometime next week. So, um, you know, we need to get a sense of um, the confirma acceptance confirmation this week, uh, know who will be, you know, the recipients or the calendar uh, invitees for next week's call. And then once I get that piece ready and I'll reach out to you. So it'll be later this week. That would be great. Does anybody else on the call have any questions for Min or any questions about the mentorship program? Okay. Well, thank you so much, Min, for joining us. Of course. Yeah. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Okay. So now we're going to get back to the call. Um, does anybody have any questions of me about what just happened? <laughs> it's kind of like, okay, I'm volunteering everybody left and right. Um, okay. So getting back to our call, um, here is... Welcome and introductions. So let me just recap a little bit about what I said. So right now, what we're doing, um, and when you introduce yourself, you, yeah, if you have any thoughts about um, this, just please bring them out. Um, what we're trying to do is support the community, obviously. We need to have two presentations. One is the mentorship, which you heard is just going to be um, to the group offering. 
Um, and how we do that is up to us. If we want to have six people present as representatives of a project, or we'll, we can talk about that um, in due time. But, and then the TOC on June 15th or 22nd, I think it's more the 22nd, I have a feeling the TOC call is gonna be canceled next week or this week. So um, just keep an eye out on those. Um, and again, when I was looking at our little buckets as I've been calling them, I really couldn't figure out, everybody's signing up for everything. And I was like, was like blowing my mind how to figure out how to do this. And so I, I came up with this idea and I don't know if everybody you know wants it. So again, as the mentee, I, I said, I'm gonna do the teach the teacher thing. And one of the things I learned when I was getting my master's in education is the best way is to break up into subgroups. So instead of doing our buckets, um, I think it might be a good idea if we just do it around the projects. So in other words, um, we'll assign, let's drop down the projects. We'll assign someone or two people, depending on how many we have or what the interest is in that particular project, um, someone to each one of these projects. And I'll pick up the slack in the mentor um, the mentee will pick up the slack for whoever doesn't sign up for uh, one of the projects. And what you will do um, as that project specialist, so say, for instance, you become the BESU, you, you volunteer for BESU. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the Hyperledger Foundation. And again, in this community, it's do first, ask later. Um, so you're going to go to the calendar of public meetings and you're going to find the BASU meeting. You could also have gone right to their project page. It's probably, let's do that. That's probably way easier. You would go to their project page. I'm on Apollo. Um, and find out, you know, go to their Discord. That's the best way. Discord is the best way. Go to their disc. We have a Discord channel. They have a Discord channel. Go to the Discord channel um, and introduce yourself. Say, I am on the documentation. I'm a mentee for the documentation um, task force. Bobby sent me over here. We want to know uh, what you're, you know, how we can help you with your documentation. As a task force, we are not asking any project to go back and redo their documentation. We're just offering to fill whatever gaps they might have and offer templates for moving forward and best practice guidelines, user guides for moving forward to make their jobs easier so they can stick to developing new projects as opposed to writing about them. So that's our goal. So you would just probably join this or find out when their meetings are, maybe hop on their repositories make suggestions, keep all your work on your workspace that that, that you created. Um, but that's what I'm suggesting. Um, and right now I'm gonna go back to our page. Why don't I have that much easier? Um, and ask um, people as they introduce themselves. So that's the first thing. So it's that and the presentations that's coming up. So as I go down the list for introductions, if you have a project you're interested in or, or a tool or a library that you want to um, assist with documentation by doing a fact finding, please let me know. Um, but right now I'm going to go through the introductions um, and we'll start alphabetically with Agnes. Uh, do I need to share my video? Um, no, 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 not at all. Just introduce yourself, where you're from, and like why, you're, where your interests are, or if you've been working on something in this task force, what you've been working on. Okay, uh, that caught me off guard. <laughs> it happens a lot. Uh, so my name is Agnes. I'm from Kenya, Nairobi. Um, I have never done any project this big. This is gonna be my first time, so. I think I'm gonna to have to go look at the projects and figure out what looks interesting from what I can learn. Yeah, so I spend a lot of time writing some tutorials, blogs around technology, some bit of time coding, learning. Yeah, so I'm here to learn as much as I can and contribute as well. And I hope to learn from all of you. Thank you. 
Yes, thank you. We will have um, a, a huge need for technical, um, well, not technical writers, but writers to help with the user guides to support all of our efforts. So thank you and welcome aboard. Um, again, I'm going to, Akanasha, please correct me. Oh, uh, yeah, it's Akansha. Akansha. I'll get it right one day. Akansha. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. So hello, everybody. So it's been a long time now, I think so that I've been a part of this team, because I've been attending the calls like since, like almost after it started this uh, last month itself. And uh, uh, since then, I've been like, uh, understanding and uh, working on the documentation and the onboarding part of uh, the Hyperledger. And I have been interested in both of the projects. And I would love, I love to uh, collaborate with all of you to work on the documentation project. And uh, since we have the, uh, such an amazing mentor, like Bobby Ma'am, so I don't think it would be of much problem because she is so, uh, you, she just formulates everything. So make, making it uh, easy for everyone. And other than that, I have some, ex I have experience in technical writing since I have written some of the search papers, which have been published. And uh, I am also a front-end developer. And I would love to collaborate uh, with all of you this summer and work on documentation and make this project a success. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much. Um, Arunima? Yeah, so hello everyone. My name is Arunima Chaudhary and I am from India. I just graduated this month and after that I will be joining my master's program at IIIT Bangalore. And I am a, I am a part of this community since the last one month and have been attending calls. I must say I have learned a lot from here. So it started with, uh, I have been previously a blockchain intern at uh, Solana Lab. So that's how my journey and interest with knowing more about blockchain started. And when I got to know that Hyperledger is participating in the LFX program, I applied and I started interacting with the community more. And yeah, I, I learned a lot from here. I met a lot of new people here. Some of them I've connect, I have connected with them on LinkedIn as well. So it's, it's a, uh, it's a great uh, feeling to be a part of this community. And, uh, yeah, as Akanksha said, uh, we will collaborate and, you know, make this project a success. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I just wanted to extend um, our deepest uh, sympathies, our thoughts and prayers are with you for the horrible train accident in your country. Um, just, yes. uh, just yes. awful, awful. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it, it happened at a place very nearby to where I'm staying. So, and even my roommate is from that place. So I was very afraid that if like a lot of people have died, so I can feel that. It's it's really very sad to see such so accidents sorry. happening. So sorry. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So back to business. Um, yeah. and thank you for being on board. Um, Daniel. Okay. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Daniel. I'm from Nigeria, and um, no doubt this is really a massive project, and um, it's really my first time getting involved in a project like this. So personally, I'm open to any of the projects and um, I can't speak for now, but I'm open to any of the projects and I'm ready to dive in. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. Ishan? Uh, hello everyone, uh, I'm Ishan. Uh, so yeah, this is not my first uh, documentation task force call, but yeah, I'd like to introduce myself again to everyone who are new on this call. So I'm Ishan, I'm a computer science undergraduate. Uh, currently in my second year and uh, yeah I, I live in Pune India and uh, that that is it I'm very excited for this project um, great people great mentors uh, and yeah uh, uh, looking forward to get along with everyone well welcome and Ezra hello I'm Ezra from Kenya mm, a blockchain developer cryptographer and uh, the project I might be interested in is the Hyperledge Anonymous yeah. Residentials, which is um, where the field where I'm more interested in. Awesome. Um, and, and what I might do um, for people to get a better idea of the projects and tools, 
Um, if we have time um, at the end, um, after I do the other things that we need to get done, I might just go over the projects and tools very quickly with you to give you an idea um, of what um, they are so that if you wanna pick one to help with the documentation and then come back to the group and teach us about it, that would be great. Um, so let's move on. Um, Frank. I just talked to Frank this morning. He was so, so, so patient with me with the interviews. <laughs> okay, I'm Frank Joseph. I'm a software developer and a technical writer. And uh, I have an idea. I know how to use the Docker as code and um, process. I think I've used that to contribute to an um, open source project, Docker 10. So this is my first time, like, like you said, getting the call. So I really do not know the projects that are available to select from. Yeah, but I will want to be a part of the community and then see how I can contribute to make this a success also. Thank you. I'm based in Nigeria, Lagos State. Well, welcome, Frank. Glad you joined us. Um, Gianluca? Yes, hi, I'm Gianluca. Uh, I'm a software engineer from, uh, from Italy. Also, I have a PhD, a PhD in uh, artificial intelligence, but I'm passionate in blockchain and also in open source as well. So I love to contribute and join to this project, uh, Hyperledger. Again, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Kajal. I'm from India. I'm uh, currently I'm uh, working uh, on the like uh, GitHub uh, template and best practices uh, the two tasks of the documentation task force and like uh, previously I have done uh, open source contribution in a uh, documentation and technical writing and I'm also an Android developer so I'm uh, looking forward to learn uh, from this uh, project. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, and Perrin? Um, hi, everyone. My name is Karan Varma, and I hail from Sports City of India, which is known as uh, Chalandar. So I have done engineering in computer science from North India, and I have been a part of Hyperledger community since 2019, and I have been organizing virtual events and physical events for Hyperledger community and uh, actively part of the Hyperledger Indian chapter for attending weekly meetings to empower our community. Now coming to the documentation task force, I think through this project not only I will know about the documentation task force and Hyperledger projects, but also improve my leadership skills through this mentorship program. So thank you so much. Thank you. Again, I appreciate everybody who's on the call. Um, Malcolm. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is, is Malcolm Connor. Uh, a little background on me. I started uh, learning about blockchain technology in about 2018 with Bitcoin. Um, that's also when I uh, started really learning programming and coding. Um, I learned uh, different languages like C, C Sharp, Python, um, SQL and et cetera. Um, 2019, I uh, got more into Python machine learning and data science. Uh, then I got my first uh, position in uh, data analytics. After that, it was my first programming position um, around the pandemic in 2020. Um, then uh, after that, um, I went into learning about Ethereum more uh, and about, I, I guess the end of 2020, started learning about Ethereum. Um, deployed a couple of testnet projects on Polygon, um, did some Web3 tutorials, did some uh, tutorials on smart contract security. Um, then I got into more into NFTs and um, learned about Ethereum <clears throat> is what got me into Hyperledger. I know that the Hyperledger Bisu project is uh, one of the projects that uh, are uh, connect to Ethereum. So um, read a, a book or two on Hyperledger, did a, a tutorial through uh, the VS Code extension, um, and uh, fell in love with the technology. Uh, currently taking a Hyperledger course on EDX and uh, using this uh, uh, mentorship program to 
um, not only um, uh, bolster my programming expertise, but also to get some experience with um, contributing to open source as well. So I'm really looking forward to working with you all and uh, looking forward to uh, learning from you all as well. Oh, great. Welcome aboard. Um, who's next? Uh, Pracharya? Uh, Ma'am, my internet connection is pretty unstable. I might drop off. Uh, I'll try to rejoin in a minute. Will that be fine? Oh, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and, and again, I have to apologize. I'm from New Jersey and I have the worst Jersey accent. So if I'm butchering your names, it's not on purpose. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm it's really trying. Completely it's completely. <laughs> my, my New York accent is betraying me. Uh, Sahil? This is, hello, hello folks. Uh, my name is Sahil. I have been contributing to open source projects since over a year, particularly in documentation. And uh, this, this way I have learned a lot. And I would, uh, I'm uh, looking forward to contribute in uh, Hyperledger as it's a blockchain uh, organization and using blockchain technologies to make some really good stuff. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, so, uh, what what I think is uh, Bobby Bobby was trying to explain that uh, in this projects under this projects there are different hyperledger projects. So uh, we can choose any one of uh, these projects to work under, right? Correct. So I was thinking that I am very familiar with Python. So and I have also worked under uh, Python for documentation. So I would like to uh, understand first that in this project, if you go down, uh, there's a drop down button. So what what are, what are these incubating graduated and project documentation? What, what are those? We're going to go over that more. Yeah, I, I'm realizing that everybody needs that. So I'm going to go over that in the next few minutes. Um, so sure. yeah, I will definitely do that. Thank you. Uh, trip tour. Hi, Bobby. Hi, everyone. Hi. My name is Tripur and I'm from India, Pink City, Rajasthan. And um, I'm in my last year and I always wanted to uh, contribute in open source. So this year I take the, uh, took the initiative and started with it. And I'm, I'm always interested in blockchain. And I got uh, my first internship through open source actually. And that's how I'm making my way in the industry. I am a technical writer and a researcher and uh, currently working on a blockchain based paper. And it's about social media and how we all want to integrate it with the blockchain, what it will like, how it will be more beneficial and about all that stuff. And uh, Bobby, I want to ask one question. Can I uh, like tell you about the project that I want to choose right now? Yeah, of course. So um, I yesterday I attended the meeting of Soland and uh, I get to know. Nice. <laughs> yeah. as Bobby suggested to go around and like attend the meetings and say her name like uh, she sent it me and I can attend any meeting so I did uh, I took the advice and uh, I landed on a Solang meeting and I really liked the product and what uh, is happening in the team and they were all like very welcoming they entertained all my questions so if uh, like uh, I want to suggest that I want to go with the Solang project. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing that. And Victoria? Hello, everyone. Good day. I'm Victoria from Nigeria. I'm so happy to be here to be part of this huge project. I'm a software developer and a technical writer. I look forward to meeting amazing personalities here. Thank you so much for being Thank you. Let's see if that worked. Of course not. <laughs> it's too easy. Um, okay, so that's great that everybody's here and that some people, I don't want to miss out anyone. So I'm just going to do this. Uh, hold on a second. Because again, I'm not, I have to write things down or else I'll 
uh, I can't keep track of them. Um, and this was stolen. So now what I was saying, it would be probably the best thing for everybody involved if they picked a project. So again, a lot of people are new to the community and they're like, what are you talking about? Pick a project. So I'm going to explain it to you. So I write the tech, I write the um, edX courses for the Linux Foundation for Hyperledger. And there's a new course coming out called Hyperledger. Um, and this is um, going to be part of that course. If you want, it's a free course, go take it. It's, I just finished it. I think it's great, but you know, whatever you think. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to start with this picture up here. If you can see it, this is what's called the blockchain tech stack. Um, again, this is my opinion of what is the blockchain tech stack. And the first is the protocol layer, which is the blockchain itself, the distributed ledger. The next is the consensus layer, which is the um, mechanism that they use to come to agreement as to the state of the ledger. The next is the data, whether it's security data, whether it's off-chain, on-chain data, data storage in the cloud, off the cloud, where are you going to put the data that supports this blockchain? The next is logic, the smart contracts. How are you going to get this data to dance? What are you going to do to it to get it to do what you want it to do? And then finally is the application layer, the layer that um, we see or we use. Um, and I'm always going to refer back to a project for an example, the giving chain, which if you want to see what, what I've been up to in the community, it's www.thegivingchain.org. Um, I've tried to do a community social impact project. I've used Sawtooth. I've used Firefly. I'm still up in the air as to what's next, um, but it's an interesting project. And um, we built all these layers, which was really fun working through it. So uh, as you see any project, you try to figure out what layer it's in. So the distributed layer ledgers that are in uh, graduated status are these. So I'm just going to put this graph back. So now it's in normal size. Um, so first, we're going to go over the first one, which is Hyperledger Fabric. Now, that was the first one that came out. Um, and it was offered by IBM. It was with Sawtooth as the be beginning. As you can see here for the fabric information, it is a graduated Linux Foundation project, open source with an Apache license. Um, this is the best practice badge, which, which our group will have to deal with, this over here document passing. We need to make sure everybody in the community knows what those documents are and what they need to look like to pass. Um, but anyway, so the um, current releases of Fabric, here are links to them. It's 2.5. Um, here is the code base languages for Fabric. So if you code in Go, that's a project that maybe you'd understand. Um, here's a history on the contributors. We're not going to go over that too much. Um, if you click this graphic, which isn't very clear in my screen, you can come on. Move, move. Anyway, you can kind of see IBM is still the main contributor for Fabric, um, but you can see this. And this is also in the community somewhere. I should just. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm playing with my screen. So that's Fabric. Um, and Fabric is basically a permission for consortium. It offers member services. In other words, in order to do Fabric, you have to have your um, identity defined. You have to have what channels your organization um, can um, play around in um, and what smart contracts they can see, what smart contracts they can use. Um, consensus is decided by the group um, and the models are plug and playable. So you can take out, you switch your consensus models without having to interfere with your entire network. Um, here are some of the components. Um, they offer peers, which is different um, people who have rights. You can be an endorsing peer. You can be someone who is committing the transactions to the ledger peer. There's all kinds of roles. Um, and that's just basically um, the, the workflow of Fabric. So if you're familiar with Fabric or want to get to know it, um, this is the place to go. Now, down at the bottom here, 
Um, if you go to the Fabric Wiki page, this is where I got all this information. Um, you can click and see what their current documentation is. You can see what their GitHub repository looks like, YouTube videos on it, Wiki pages, websites, and Discord. Again, if you want to pick this project to help them out with our documentation efforts, which there's a lot of sub-projects in the mentorship project for, for Fabric, like different pieces of it, um, go to the Discord, introduce yourself, and, and do it reported. Just join the call and say, hey, Bobby sent me, we're on the documentation, we're here to support you, we need to know, you know, the status of your, you know, documentation, you know, whatever. The community is looking for help, so no one's going to say, oh my God, they're here, they're going to be, thank you, you're here. So that's Fabric, and I'm going to do this quick, um, just to give people an idea, um, and that's a case study on Fabric, which is, if you, you haven't seen this case study, it's Walmart. There was uh, poison in the food. It took Walmart three weeks to figure out what farm it came from before blockchain. Now with blockchain, if there's a disease, any kind of uh, food board disease, they can figure out what farm it came to and shut it down within three seconds. Um, so that is one of the use cases that is still working. Um, and then again, here's Sawtooth. It's a graduated project, same licensing, same things. Here's its latest release. It's written in Rust and Python. So if you're um, used to those languages, this is something you'd understand in the control line, in the command line. Um, what this is more for is supply chain. So it gets a lot of different people involved in um, transporting goods and services. The first time we wrote the giving chain, we wrote it on Sawtooth. Um, and Bitwise and the Linux Foundation and Rutgers University and Accenture are big contributors to this project. And this is just this quarter's contributors. Um, if you dive into the project page, you'll see that there's more than just these. These are just the people who have been working on it this past quarter. Um, again, key components. You can take the class. It's up on edX complementary. Here's kind of the sawtooth workflow. And then again, links for the sawtooth deep dive can be found on that wiki page. And they did a medical control. They're controlling your um, electronic health records. So there's only some things in your electronic health records you want people to see. Um, Sawtooth is also used to uh, the providence of medicines to make sure that you are getting the correct medication and it was transported in the proper temperatures in the proper way. Indy, the new one, the buzz one. Indy is the uh, identity management. And with IEEE, I saw somebody when I was going over uh, resumes had worked with IEEE. This would be a great project to you to attach to. Um, Indy is, um, again, the DLT. Aries is the um, data piece, the wallet piece for it. It used to have Indy, which was the security piece but more people wanted to use Indy outside. I mean, I'm sorry, Ursa was a security piece. More people wanted to use Ursa outside of Indy. So Ursa now became a um, deprecated project and um, the components of Ursa are being added to um, different projects as code base to make it more available. Um, so Indy has, um, like if you're doing indie, you might as well do Aries too, or team up with someone who's doing Aries too, because they kind of go together. Um, and indie is current release is one one, um, and it's Rust and Python as well. Uh, major contributors again are a lot of identity uh, foundations, and this is just this quarter. Um, so that's definitely a project to watch because. Um, identifying yourself on a blockchain is usually the first step, um, especially in our enterprise environment. Um, it talks about DIDs, which are the decentralized identifier, identifiers. Um, in my opinion, here's a summation of IEEE. What they're trying to do for identity on blockchain and internet management is just like if someone in the United States uh, wants to get a phone call, you dial one, which tells people it's the United States. And then if you do the next area code, which 609 is New Jersey, um, if you see 609, you know it's New Jersey. Then the extension, the next three numbers are my town, and the last four numbers is my personal phone. 
Well, they're trying to get that kind of standard like we have for the phone for identity. So the first piece would be like the type of identifier it is. The next piece would be who issued it, that kind of thing. So they're working on trying to get the standards for identity in place uh, before too many people are using it. Um, and verifiable credentials, the whole um, trust triangle where you get an issuer, you're the holder of your um, identity certificate. So if you want to verify your diploma or your medical records, you no longer need to contact your old school or your doctor. You own it. You can supply it, share it any way you want with your identity wallet. Uh, and again, here's the information um, about um, Indy. If you want to go, you can just get it off the wiki page. And their use case is the Verifiable Network, which is a British um, Columbia sort of um, looking for the word um, ranking of businesses so that you know you're actually using a, a, a correct business and that they've been certified through the state or country. Um, again, Aroha is um, for easy mobile application development. Um, it's a graduated project, same um, stuff. It's more written in C++, um, which is is great for people who are, are using C++. Um, its contributors are uh, Sor Sorimoto from um, a long time. Intel is another one. Um, so this is an interesting project too. It's easy to develop. So in other words, if you want to do mobile apps, um, it's it's out of the box kind of mobile development. Um, and again, information for um, Indy or I'm sorry, Aroha can be found on their page. So finally, the newest Besu, and in my opinion, the most interesting, is the one that crosses over into the public domain. Um, it uses the Ethereum virtual machine. It bridges, can tokenize, can use NFTs, can do all that fun stuff that um, Ethereum does in a permissioned environment. Um, so the latest release of that and the new um, standard for I think this is an NFT kind of standard where you can build in um, royalties for the creator. Um, and again, this is a Java uh, based program language um, code. It's by Consensus and the Ethereum Foundation. Um, again, Consensus is the biggest contributor. Um, and this is kind of what um, it does. Uh, you can also um, go get more information on Besu here. Um, again, so that's Besu. Now the tools kind of work off that. We don't have time to do the tools today. Uh, oh, uh, show of hands, who wants to do the tools or who wants to just talk about the task force? In the chat, show of hands. So the first, uh, raise your hand if you want to do the tools. Okay, so I only saw four hands for the tools. Um, so let me go back to the task force meeting and show signups and stuff. And then if we have time, we'll do the tools. So again, here is our um, page for our documentation. Um, come on, save it, save it, save it. I'm waiting for it to click back. Um, our documentation task force, it's linked on the mentorship. If you go there that way, I will also, well, everybody probably has it because you put your, your name under the mentorship. If you don't have a work page, please grab one. It's a great way for me to know. Um, if you are interested in attaching to a project and don't want me to assign one to you, just kidding. Uh, I'd love to see everybody um, put their name here. And what all you have to do this week is an assignment for, for this, if you want to, again, it's completely optional, is go to the calendar of public meetings. Find a call this week that interests you. I, um, we didn't really even talk about the special interest groups. Those are consortiums of people building solutions on these tools. 
We could use a, 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 someone in there to find their documentation needs too. The one I suggest, because it affects every single person on this call, is the Carbon Accounting and Certification Work Group. Any help we can give them, please join their group. Please spread the word. It is important. Um, other than that, there's healthcare today, a non creds. That is the new um, kind of where Ursula wound up in a in a project. So that's an interesting brand new project. Um, if you get in on that one, you're not late for the game on that one because it just started a few weeks ago. Um, Cactus is the interoperability tool, trying to make all these blockchains talk to each other. Um, that's uh, one of the tools. This is a lab, so this isn't even a project yet. If you're interested in new stuff, we also are supporting the lab efforts. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And again, uh, we've already been, we've already had a representative on the Solang call. Um, so again, all these calls are here. Just join one, say, I sent you. You're here to uh, get some documentation information. Firefly is another great call. That's blockchain as a service. That was the second um, time we did the giving chain, we used Firefly. Um, and again, you're more than welcome to come to the TOC calls. Those are more the hyperledger management calls. Um, everybody's welcome. So getting back, that's how you join one of those calls. Oh, that was her collaborative learning. That's not what I want. I need this. And what I've also done. So again, we also will be working over the summer um, on the documentation um, issues. So I gave a page to each one of these um, issues. So for instance, best practices has a link to a survey I created asking you where you're from if you're interested in best practices. Um, this is not the best practices task force or mentorship. This is just the documentation piece for best practices. Um, where you're from and what, what time the call would be best for you. Um, and I'll show you what this Trello is. This is where each group, subgroup, and committee will keep track of their work. Again, I'm going to teach you new software programs. This is a free program. Everyone can, can download it. I use it personally um, and professionally. What is going on? Maybe I'll show that to you in another time. I don't want to log into Trello right now. Um, uh, maybe I'll show that to you guys tomorrow or next week um, when I have it more uh, down pat. Anyway, so Trello is a board where we keep track of our tasks. Um, and I'll show that to you um, as soon as I can. Um, and then the same thing with GitHub. If you're interested in working with the make the docs, read the docs and the GitHub repository, as well as attaching to a project, um, please sign up for your time zone. Um, I will try to get you the invite. I thought this was an invite to the Trello workspace. You just might have to log in and then you'll be at the workspace and put your name down um, here. Templates, we're gonna be revisiting and rewriting the, the templates for the community, whether it be uh, white papers, use cases. Again, time zone, here's a, a Google doc. I think I'm on edit. That's not going to work. I'm on edit. Okay, that didn't work. All right, I have to go back in and put the um, link to the documentation committee survey um, for everyone. I will get that done by the end of the day. Um, so that link will be, instead of to edit the survey, will be to take the survey. And I did the same thing for onboarding. And I added two because people are going to have to write user guides and we're going to have to have a workspace for the presentation. So our first presentation, again, is going to be to the mentees um, coming up next week. And that's just going to be, you know, if you want to go look at those projects and attach yourself, like if you're fabric saying, oh, there's three projects that are going to have fabric. I want to do a slide at the mentorship program to introduce myself to those fabric people and say, hi, my name is Bobby, and I'm going to be doing um, documentation um, and helping you out through your project for your documentation needs. Here's my email. Let me connect with you on Discord, like whatever, however you want to, you know, get that connection going. Um, but those are the two presentations coming up. So again, it's all about signing up for stuff this week. Um, I appreciate if that is what happens. So before I've talked for an hour, which I didn't really plan on doing, 
I'm going to ask if there's any questions. We can do the tools next week. Oh, I have a chat. Um, oh, thank you, Malcolm, on the edX course. I appreciate the post it, blog it, tell everyone it's a great course. <laughs> Use my name. Um, all right, so it is five more minutes. I guess I can show you the tools just to give you a little familiarity. Before you go, please, can you, I just want to reiterate some of the things you said so that there'll be clarity on what we're supposed to do next, if that's fine with you. That's perfect. Okay. Okay, um, so, okay, go ahead. Yeah, uh, first, uh, I think one of the first few things you want us to do is to indicate uh, which of these options will be working with GitHub, the templates, the onboarding, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so we had to click on any of the options and um, add our details, if, I, if that's the, is that it? Correct. For instance, let's, let's, okay, we add our details here. Then we open the form to fill it to align on the meeting times. Correct. But okay. I have to fix the form because it says edit and I have to get it so you're taking it and not editing it. Okay, got it. So we have to wait a few, maybe in an hour or two. Exactly, or yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Now the second thing I get from this meeting is... Or if, uh, wait, if it'll be easier, why don't we could just do this. Okay. I'm just going to do this. It might be so much easier. Yep. Yeah, I think that makes it. Yeah. And again, these are just Eastern Daylight Time is because is that's where I am. And I'm, I apologize for being so centered. Um, but just put your time zone down in Eastern so we can get an idea. And there's going to be four different. Um, And we'll focus on an actual two o'clock, three, you know, whatever that means when we get more people. So just put your preference down to one of the five. And I mean, morning being like Eastern time, 8 a.m. to 11. Um, afternoon is kind of, or I'm sorry, till uh, noon. And then afternoon is like noon to three. Mid-afternoon is like three to six. Early evening is like six to eight. And um, late evening is like eight to 11. So if you have a preference for those, put your time zone down. Um, so I am um, Eastern Daylight Time and I would prefer uh, morning. Okay. So okay. instead of going to the survey, we can just do that instead. <laughs> What's it? Thank you for okay. bringing that up. So yes, I want you to do that, but you're kind of signing up for two areas. This area with the best practices and the, and the GitHub stuff is gonna take off a little later, but getting familiar with a project is gonna happen first. So back on the documentation task force page is where you could, so you're kind of signing up for two things that interest you. Um, everybody should be familiar with one of the projects or tools and then focus in on the documentation task force. So here I'm going to put um, and next week we'll even add a, a time for uh, like the teach the teacher kind of thing where you report back. Um, so you'll tell us what the call was about and what their documentation needs are, or just that you attended it and kept quiet. That's fine too. I mean, you don't have to be loud and boy, you can just listen to the call. Say, so, you know, I'm just here to listen. And they'll that's fine too. So okay. There okay. Are, so when I you drop down, when you drop this, down the projects, just pick from one of these choices. Oh, crap. Okay. Yeah, got it. So I take it the priority is for us to get familiar with the projects and pick which project we'll be interested in. Yes. 
and put your name here and the project you're interested in, and then try to attend a call. Go to that you know calendar of public meetings okay. and see when they meet and join a convenient call. Gotcha. All the calls are open to everyone all the time. So don't be afraid to join a call. Does anybody else have any more questions? Uh, yeah, I had a question. I had to ask like, uh, when will like, we'll get the mentors for onboarding things and so managing the documentation part. I had some like doubts regarding onboarding part. So, uh, John, I'm, not, so I'm not running the mentorship for onboarding and my onboarding task force is again, um, this is the information for the onboarding task force that I'm helping out with the TOC. This is not the mentorship program for onboarding. The mentorship program for onboarding has a lot to do with developing the website and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's why I just wanted to ask, like, uh, this is the call, right? Where the, the, that will be discussed or there will be another link? Yes, on. but John um, Carpenter is not here today. Okay, okay. So from next week, he'll be joining or like? Yes. And if not, I'll find out information for you on the onboarding task force and the onboarding mentorship program. Again, our job for onboarding is there's six spots the community joins Hyperledger, whether it's the Discord, the LinkedIn, the website, the wiki, there's two more, uh, LinkedIn and, the, and GitHub. Um, and there's four personas. We need, as our task force, we need to supply the information so that everything those four personas need is two clicks away. User got whatever they need. Um, and we have to determine what they need. So that's our job this summer is trying to figure out what user guides those four personas need on those six locations. Okay, okay, I got it. So like, uh, since you said, like we have to choose a project, so can we choose documentation with onboarding? Yeah, no, no, choose a project. What, what, what I mean by that is, um, as a, uh, you, you've just joined the Hyperledger community and you're gonna be working with, with Hyperledger, I'm suggesting that you get familiar with one of the projects. And the oh. only way to do that is attend one of the calls. And oh. then if you do that, you can come back to the documentation task force and say, I attended the BASU call and they have a real need for templates for their documentation. They were complaining the whole time. You come back and tell us that. Or you go to Fabric and you say, Fabric doesn't need any documentation. They have their own task force. We should use them as a model. That kind of information. Okay, okay, I got it now. I got it. Thank you so much. And no worries. And then so here on this page is where we would know who's gone to what call. So you would put uh, your name, the project, whether it's a special interest group, whether it's a tool, a library, or uh, one of the DLTs, put the name of it here and the date you attended the call and that whether you're willing to tell us what you learned about their documentation. Anybody else have any, we're a few minutes over. So I was wondering if anybody else had any more questions. Go ahead, Victoria. Okay, so um, my question is, um, is there like a guide where we can go to, like for now, you said we can sign up for um, best practices, GitHub templates, onboarding user guides and presentation. So is there like a um, like a guide or somewhere we can go and say, okay, this is what we have to do. If, I'm, if I sign up for best practices, this is what I'm going to do for throughout the summer. If I sign up for onboarding, this is what I'm going to do throughout the summer. Like, is there something like that? So we can, Correct. and then, um, sorry, is there, um, can we, is there a limit to what we can do? Like, if you're signing up for best practices, can we also sign up for um, GitHub, something like that? The only thing I ask, um, is that uh, if you sign up for something, you complete it. So for instance, if we have signups next week for the presentation for men and you sign up to do a slide um, to support the mentees um, who are working with Fabric, that you do do the slide. So if you sign up for 20 things and don't accomplish any of them, that's no good. 
But if you sign up for two things and accomplish two things, that's fabulous. So it's up to you how much work you want to do. I The first time I signed up in the community, I almost worked full time for six months. Complimentary. It, it was a college education for me. I learned so much. That's why I did it. And now I teach it. Um, so you'll get, again, whatever you put in is what you'll get out. Um, let me go to the dashboard. Again, so each, if you go to your LFX mentorship dashboard, each project has um, Oh, I'm in GitHub. Well, Hyperledger has a GitHub and all of the information you were asking on the task forces, which have been running under the TOC for months, even before the mentorship program, you can just, and all the project reports for every project is here. So every quarter they report to the TOC, you can read what they reported. Um, governing documents, where's task forces? Where's our task forces? Okay, so here's the task forces. I can put the um, what they're working on. So you can just scroll through the Hyperledger TOC GitHub repository. That's one way to do it. You can look at the mentorship program. Again, I was running the onboarding task force, and again, I was just looking at the documentation piece of it. The onboarding task force has a lot to do with doing the interfaces for those six spots that people come on, like what the buttons will look like. We're kind of supporting the user guides for those buttons, if that helps you. But again, you can always go to the wiki page, which that's an old wiki page. And the task forces um, are here on the wiki page. So you can search them here and you can get their links. Um, the search button is great. So that if that helps you answer your question, Victoria. Anybody else have any more questions? Now, by the way, this is the learning materials working group, the old um, archived working group. Here's the templates that need to be revised. Thank you, your blog uh, basic. Uh, Excuse me? I said a quick one, I have a very quick question. Go ahead. Are you allowed to collaborate? Absolutely, this is our group. We can do whatever we want. I am not in charge, I'm just facilitating. You guys can offer a, the Discord. Again, I'm not a huge fan of Discord, but let's go there. Yeah, same here. Please I'm use this Discord. Use the Discord channel for meetings if you want. If you need a Zoom link meeting, reach out to me and I'll send you one. But Discord, you can just do meetings on impromptu. Um, and let me see if I can just drop the link to the Discord in the chat. If that helps, yeah. If you reach out to someone um, on this call and say, even in the chat right now, you wanna hook up later and talk about doing Besu or whatever, we have, oh, the old working group is still there. Uh, we have a task force. Again, these are where you can talk to, reach out and talk to everyone on all of these. Um, here's all the labs. It's, it's a fabulous discord. If I can find where I'm going, it would even be better. Okay, uh, what I'm asking is because I have a suggestion. Uh, I think that's to everybody here. Uh, maybe except for you, Bobby, perhaps, mm -hmm. uh, that perhaps uh, we should take time to look through the projects, then maybe we should meet, then we should pair ourselves to help us a little bit, more of a peer learning kind of system where we can agree, okay, oh, I understand this project better, okay, I prefer this project, then we'll split ourselves into different projects and we kind of hold ourselves accountable for respective projects and documentation going forward. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody. Yeah, that's exactly what this sign up is trying to accomplish. Let me show you. So once next week, we meet every Monday at the same time at nine o'clock. So next week, I'm going to see here and I'm going to see if there's three people who have Solang. 
They're right. going to be grouped together. If there's three people with Besu, they're going to be grouped together. So that's what we'll worry about next week. But this this week is just try to find the project that interests you, sit in it on a call and see if that's the one you want to learn about. I mean, you're here to learn definitely about the projects in Hyperledger. And you're going to learn them through the lens of documentation. But everybody should learn about a project. I don't want you to be able to code that project. I just want you to be able to discuss it intelligibly to the group. <laughs> okay, no worries. Got it. And if you can code that project, even better. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody have a nice week. If you have any questions, please, I will check the Discord if that's a convenient way of discussing and try to fill out um, your email addresses because that's the best way, I guess, for people to, if not Discord, to reach out to um, each other if you want to work together and fill out this table. I'll actually put a title on it. We'll call it Project Research. Come on. There you go. What do you want to do? Okay. So so fill out what what project you want to do some research on this summer and learn about. Um, and then again, we will break people out into groups once we figure out um where each person's project focuses and again if you have any work you want to do or want to contribute if you have an idea for the presentation for men or a presentation for the toc as to what we're going to be working on this summer go to this page and and, and drop some slides in drop some stuff in again do the work ask later we uh, this is our group and how successful we're going to be um at the global forum presenting this or wherever we're going to wind up presenting this um is as much as you know we get involved so again i want to see if just logging into trello works because this is a very cool management program let me see if i log in if it works And again, I have a personal Trello page. Um, it is the best thing for um, managing my life. So I have a Hyperledger Documentation Committee page. Each group has a card, or each group has a bucket, I call it, and you can add a card. So if we were working on fabric suggestions, we can put uh, labels, we can put um, it, different information on the card, people's names, and then you can also have uh, move it into um, different sections. So working on, completed, so we can keep track of, of your hours. Um, so this is a great, again, I'm just starting to set this up for us, um, but I'll have this working so that everyone will be able to get at this. If you're working on something, you completed it, you would just move it over to completed. Um, I'll give you a little tutorial next week on how that works. So that's coming up next week for to manage us a little bit better. Um, so again, have a good week. And I will talk to everyone um, on Monday, if not sooner. All right, Bobby, thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, thank you. Bye, folks.